1959, nine college students went missing when hiking in the Kolot Mountain regions of Russia. A search party later found their campsite destroyed and obviously abandoned in a panic. A debris trail led from the campsite to the bodies of the nine college students who were covered in mysterious wounds. No acceptable explanation has ever been given to what is now known as the Dyatlov Pass incident. This is the basis for the game Kolot. On February 25, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. Kolot is an indie horror game from first-time Polish developer IMGN.pro, in which you retrace the steps of the nine missing college students to investigate what happened. Released on Steam in 2015, and later on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, it's easy to see why the development team was drawn to this story. A baffling 60-year-old mystery with only horrifying implications is an enticing foundation for a solitary horror experience. Brimming with otherworldly potential, the Dialov Pass incident offers the perfect mix of paranoia, supernatural mystery, and unforgiving terrain. Narrator Sean Bean recounts the Dyatlov Pass incident as you arrive by train to retrace the footsteps of those who were lost. Kolot presents a what-if story behind the events on that particularly cold wintry night. Right away, I was sucked in by the incredibly well-done cutscenes, with unsettling details like how the students' tents were slashed to ribbons from the inside out, and how they ran out into the negative 32 degree night without shoes or any of their other clothes. The fact that this really happened made my skin crawl. Was it an animal, group psychosis, or something far more sinister at play? And since Kolat Siakal literally translates to Dead Mountain, it adds to the mystique. Kolat is all about exploring, following clues, and uncovering the truth behind the disappearance. Armed with only a map, compass, and flashlight, you'll traverse a wide range of locations scattered across a vast valley, from an abandoned church, to a cosmodrome, campsites, and even an altar lined with torches. Don't expect any handholding. You won't get any beacons or map markers to point you in a direction, and you won't even know where you are on the map. You'll have to rely solely on your wits to decipher the clues, find your next location on the map, and use your compass to get you there. It's not only possible, but pretty easy to get yourself turned around and completely lost in the massive twisting environment. I suspect some will find this frustrating, but if you embrace this approach, it really forces you to be methodical and study your surroundings. Once found, the various campsites will serve as fast travel, allowing you to not only get around quickly, but also orient you on the map. You'll want to listen for the faint rustling of papers pointing you to notes strewn throughout the frozen expanses. As you find them, they'll be placed on your map, indicating your location. Now over time, the map will get filled with so many discoveries that it gets cluttered and even more confusing. You'll slowly piece together the details of something called Anomaly 7, which has been linked to a ton of real-world bizarre incidents, making it clear that while it's often very lonely, you're not alone. A shadowy creature stalks you through the frozen wastes, and if it gets too close to you, it will kill you. Your flashlight flickers when you're in danger. Time to run. And here's where you begin to regret your hardcore smoking habit, cause you can't run for crap. After only the smallest of distances, you'll get tired, stumble, and your vision blurs. Don't you even lift, bro? Kolot is a master of restraint, building a real and palatable sense of tension. Instead of jump scares, you'll remain in constant anticipation of something just out of sight, expecting to run for your life at any moment. But all too often, there's nothing. I only ran into the creature a few times, but I was on edge the entire time. In between these rare encounters, you'll face other dangers from rock slides, chasms, and spike pits. Deaths will send you back to the most recently visited campsite, which isn't overly punishing. The horror in Kolot comes from the impressively crafted atmosphere. The brilliantly layered and dense sound design creates a foreboding sense of dread. 
Winds screeching around the granite mountainside combined with the gnarled, twisting cracking of trees echoing throughout the caves and ravines. <sighs> A distant wolf howls, followed by a much closer, deeper growl. Maybe it's a wolf, maybe not. Kolot's soundscape is flawless, breathing life into the lifeless world, perfectly complementing the incredible visuals. The game revels in showing you its beautiful bleakness, making you truly feel like you're not welcome. It would have been easy to copy and paste rocks and trees over and over, but there's genuine artistry everywhere, making it feel anything but samey. One of my favorite moments occurred as I approached a snow-covered mountainside, revealing a massive wall covered in carvings of giant skulls, like a monument to death. Whether traversing through ominous burnt-down forests, or finding yourself amid ancient and mysterious pillars, Kolot really nails both the sense of isolation and impending doom. The same care extends to the brief but perfectly fitting music, clearly going for a less is more approach with a somber piano's promise of something sinister. The visuals, sound, and atmosphere ultimately serve to enhance the story. And that's where Kolot stumbles. Creativity is the only limiter when starting with the Dietlove Pass incident, but the development team didn't take full advantage. It's not a bad story, mind you, just not as strong as I would have hoped. And since most of it is told through the collectibles, which can be easily missed, means that many players will never even get the full story. Kolot is a fairly bite-sized adventure, clocking in at around 4 hours for a single playthrough. However, plan to double that for completionists. To get all of the trophies, you'll need to collect every note, find all campsites, and fully explore all areas. This can sometimes be easier said than done, especially when the shadowy creature is on your heels. You'll also need to complete a playthrough without dying, so good luck. Kolot won't be for everyone. This isn't a cookie cutter horror game. There aren't side quests, an arsenal of weapons, or puzzles. Monsters won't be crawling out of every corner, and jump scares are non-existent. However, the fear is real, continually building as you traverse the cold expanse of the mountain, moving ever further into the abyss. Kolot is a fantastic, unique experience from first-time developer IMGN.pro, and I can't wait to see what mysteries they'll tackle next. There's Kolot. If you liked the video, hit like and subscribe. And if you want another game that you haven't played, check out my video right here. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.